Okay, so the third speaker this afternoon on the security track is Gunwant Dahad Yala, is that correct? Okay, thank you. Cyber Security Centre, WMG University of Warwick, uh, Principal Engineer. Uh, so he's going to talk about cyber security in V2X communications. So he graduated with a master's with honours in engineering from Imperial College London, uh, having a background in automotive industry. Interests include robust design and validation of electrical, electronic and software systems for smart, connected and autonomous vehicles, advanced test techniques, related test scenario and test suite generation methods. So I will pass over to you to start. Thank you very much. Thanks for the introduction. Um, so yeah, as I said, my name is Gunwant, Gun Gunny for short. Um, I am actually standing in for colleagues, so I do apologize if uh, my knowledge of the subject may be limited here. Um, however, I am part of the project that I'm going to present about, so I do know superficially enough about it, hopefully, to blag my way through the afternoon. Um, so um, the, the experts who have done the work, Ivan Ivanov, unfortunately couldn't be here today, but I'm very happy to take back questions if there are uh, complicated questions to, to answer for your, for your benefit. Um, so I am actually going to talk about uh, one of the collaborative pro projects we're involved with. Uh, this is an Innovate UK funded project uh, as one of the CAV calls. And CAP2. Uh, the project is called UK Site. As you can see, it's a, it's a nice, large, complex mix of partners, which makes it very easy to manage. Um, so we're, we're very fortunate, actually. So it's a good mix from uh, OEMs, technology providers, infrastructure, uh, and academia uh, involved in the project. Um, so UK Site is really uh, trying to set up um, a fully connected road infrastructure uh, in the Midlands. And it's actually one of the precursors to the testbed activity that's happening in, in the CAV world. Um, uh, it's a, a, mul a multitude of, of partners. Um, the idea is that the connected infrastructure is, uh, is a, a complementary uh, combination of different wireless technologies, uh, which includes um, LTE, uh, DSRC or ITS-G5, the short range comms, LTEV, which is on the table, although not much has happened on that, and also Wi-Fi through the wireless mesh networks that are available in the urban environments. Uh, and really designed as a platform for technology providers and vehicle OEMs to come and use to test vehicles for safety, uh, traffic flow, and other scenarios, uh, for example. All right, that's what I meant. So um, I'm gonna be talking about one of the work packages uh, today, uh, and specifically work package five, which is um, the work package um, for cybersecurity. So WMG is the lead partner, although our role um, isn't, isn't uh, extended to all of the tasks uh, within the work package. Uh, as you can see, the other partners include Siemens Myra, Siemens Myra, Vodafone, Huawei, who are working with a Vodafone, uh, Jagilandra, of course, and Vistion. Um, some of you with astute eyesight may already notice that task 5.4 is missing, and that I can attribute to cyber attack. And someone's nicked T5.4, so that's why it's not there. <laughs> Um, so the, 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 the activity here was really about looking, starting from state of the art, you know, where, where is everything happening in the space of V2X and cyber security, um, down to threat analysis and risk assessment, and this is where our partners, Harry Myra were taking the lead, to really look at how we look at the whole infrastructure, oops, the whole infrastructure um, of uh, a connected uh, environment um, needs to be secured. Uh, the architecture design led by Siemens, uh, again, it's the architecture of the whole infrastructure from uh, the, the back-end data storage and data processing elements all the way down to uh, getting data across to the vehicle. Uh, and then the implementation of the architecture also, the cybersecurity architecture is the responsibility of Myra, uh, Siemens. Uh, and 5.6 is one of the larger elements that WMG is leading around actually how do you test what you've implemented as mitigation in your cyber architecture. And the culmination of the, of the work is uh, a publication of best practices for implementation of cyber security in ITS. Uh, so as you can see with the dates, you know, June 18, we're right at the end of the, uh, the, the, the testing activity. And so the presentation will actually get us to the point where we can't disclose the results because they are, we are getting results, but they just have to be, they have to be ratified by partners, of course. But we'll, we'll lead you through the process that we've taken to, to get to that point. Uh, so again, so just a summary of the road networks we're covering. Uh, so again, Coventry and Birmingham uh, are the subject cities. Uh, so it's a loop uh, going around from the M40, the A46, uh, which is from Warwick towards Coventry, and then from Coventry out towards Birmingham on the A45, and then down again 
the M42 to the M40. So we have a loop. It's about 100 miles. Uh, and on the high, high as England sections, the, the bits on the left, pointer, not there. There are about 35 cabinets or stations now ready to mount wireless technology. And in the Coventry bit here, we have about 21 uh, stations um, ready to, to take on some of the technology. And when I say technology, I mean, you know, literally boxes going up, cabinets for power and, and comms going up, masts for the, the, the SRC antenna, equipment's going on as well. Uh, so this is all happening. You know, it's, it's going to be, it, it is live to some extent. We are, we are having vehicles starting to run. JLR are, con are contributing 100 vehicles to the, to the first trials of, uh, of the application on UK site. The idea is once it's running, that it's actually now um, and going to end up as a, an operational test bed, which is available. And our aspirations are to roll this into uh, the Midlands, officially Midlands Future Mobility test bed for CAV. Um, so in terms of the process for how we go about testing uh, cyber security within uh, the link between the infrastructure and the vehicle, uh, this is our lead area. Um, so we took uh, a view that we needed to understand the use cases from a vehicle perspective. So the, the end point is actually the vehicle suffers if something goes wrong uh, and understanding how that happens. So understanding use cases and the use cases are derived from six main applications taken from uh, the Etsy standard. So um, applications such as uh, uh, automated emergency braking, uh, emergency electronic brake light systems, etc., and then devolving down into specific use cases from there. Uh, from that, mapping onto the threats, so the threat, the threat analysis, and I'll talk about that in a minute, connected by Myra, and understanding which threats actually map onto the use cases, so we're clear to understand what we want to test, and then complementing that with understanding what, what are the facilities we have at hand to be able to carry out some of the threats and the, and the exposure of uh, weaknesses within the mitigation uh, of cyber um, implementation. So we ran two workshops with the consortia to go through in detail to get the, the essence out of actually what we're, what we're going to be doing. Um, so just a bit of detail on the, on, the, on the threat analysis. So it's nice to see that you know, we are talking the same language in this, in this forum. Uh, so threat analysis and risk assessment carried out by Myra, a very extensive exercise uh, going through the whole architecture implemented within UK site, looking at each element, each, um, each item, and also each interaction, and trying to understand what could actually be uh, the threat surface and what the threat could manifest as. So very large Excel, Excel spreadsheets, as you'd expect. And some of the key findings that came uh, out of this uh, were, again, uh, linked to privacy of data. So again, becoming more and more pertinent around if we could intercept data between infrastructure and vehicles uh, and what, what could be at risk there. Uh, loss, of, loss of availability, so denial of service type stuff due to jamming or then physical sabotage. Uh, message interception, so again, this is discussing how messages are intercepted and then you're able to, to uh, sabotage vehicles um, as per the Jeep example, which is a great example. Uh, and again, physical sabotage, as you mentioned, but this is specifically on the infrastructure side and seeing how physical access to roadside units, for example, could uh, impact cyber security. So often people are concerned about the link itself, but the physical assets themselves uh, uh, points of vulnerability. And so there on the right, you'll see, uh, not to worry too much about the detail, but you see the architecture as driven by Siemens in the, in the uh, consortium. So each box represents an element of the infrastructure. And each of the gray boxes there, you'll see the, the smaller gray boxes there, are actually mitigation actions or implementations of mitigation driven by the analysis within each aspect of the infrastructure um, so this is, most of this is back end, and then you get the comms to the vehicle here, hidden behind the box. Uh, and so the mitigation, not, not only technological mitigation, but also process mitigation, understanding what governance procedures need to be implemented, as well as the technology um, security as well. So a very comprehensive analysis which led to this. It's fair to say it's a CR&D project, so not necessarily everything here has been implemented, because uh, it's, it's a big chunk of work. A lot of it has, and our role in, in this particular work package was to focus on the implementation of the security protocols from the road to the vehicle and seeing whether we could actually find vulnerabilities um, through test for that. 
And so the process, as I said, we a use case analysis. So we had a, a template where we try to capture as much detail as possible of the system itself. Uh, and it's in it, and it's um, and it's linked to the infrastructure, so vehicle side, linked to the infrastructure side, and where the points of attack should be and could be. And details of the actors, details of the, the, the thing we'd be monitoring in typical test fashion, the, the oracle we'll be looking at to determine whether we've been able to attack successfully or not. Um, the, the comprehensive Excel sheets were condensed into um, uh, types of threats, so confidential and confidentiality privacy, availability, etc. and I'll show more later on, and showing how the use cases actually map to specific threats. So these are real, so we know that these threats have been uh, understood, and understanding how the map uh, was a critical point. Um, so the threats themselves, you know, we had 106 different lines of uh, potential um, attack, uh, were grouped and classified into different classes. So spoofing and flooding, hopefully these align also with the, the, the stride um, type um, uh, uh, mapping. Spoofing, tampering, jamming, interception, et cetera, et cetera. And the idea here is that each one of those analyses from the large Excel matrix could map into one of these types of cyber attack. This helps us because we don't then have to do 106 different types of tests, but we can actually run one type of test and look at the impacts on, on a multiple set of um, uh, use cases. Um, so just to, uh, uh, just to elaborate a little bit more on the, on the applications or use cases that were selected. So there were a subset of those identified in the Etsy specifications. Um, so the total Etsy specification lists these uh, as specific applications. And so for UK site, specific ones were selected by the consortia as being applicable. Uh, for the project itself. So the work is very much around understanding what's the impact on these specific applications and use cases. Um, so just going into the detail of the types of attacks and the classifications. So uh, once understanding this level, it was then also then trying to break it down into the next level of what, where is the attack in terms of the, the, wireless, um, the wireless space. Uh, for us, in this phase, it was uh, interesting to pick up the jamming aspect. So the experiments we've been running have been specifically around jamming and focused on the GNSS or the satellite systems and the DSRC. Uh, so um, projects been using um, Coda wireless units, uh, working with Siemens uh, as the roadside and the, uh, and the onboard vehicle units. And also, uh, because of the facilities we have at the university, we have a uh, a simulator where we can actually shield off the outside world and generate uh, satellite signals. Uh, we can generate the GNS signals at will uh, and, then for, and therefore be able to create the environments for, for tests for that as well. Um, so the sorts of things we've been monitoring, um, so here's an example of a typical performance requirement we'd, we'd be interested. So here, uh, this is taken from the Etsy, um, Etsy specification. They have two vehicles, and there's a vehicle to vehicles communication requirement that any data sent over the air between the two vehicles uh, must adhere to a strict time requirement of 300 milliseconds or less. And for us, it was about can we design experiments? Can we look at where the weaknesses in the systems are between vehicles? For example, through manipulating the GNSS, jamming GNSS, or over the air communication data to violate that particular performance requirement or target. Um, so this is just um, just to demonstrate the complexity of the of the test matrix itself. Um, so what we have here on the left are the, are the test cases and the test groupings as we've identified. Um, and the mapping here, the colors just signify um, where the test will be done, whether the desktop, simulator-based, or on the real, in the real world. Uh, this particular bit is the responsibility we had to the MG. A lot of the stuff on the right, the, the, the Ms, uh, signify work by Myra to be done at the test track to complement there what we've done. Um, so this, this is the last slide and I'll, it's just, a demo, just to lead into I guess the results that we will, be, uh, we will be publishing very very soon. So there's an example of the, uh, of the jamming work we're going to do with the GNSS. Um, we, uh, we've been looking at three different types of jammers. It's a very cheap Chinese jammer. I think three pounds or something. Uh, but actually this is what the jammer does and it operates exactly in the space where the Galileo and GPS frequency bands are. So it's actually a very cheap way to disrupt position information, and it does. 
Um, you see Je Glonass is actually just to the, to the side of that, so actually the Chinese um, technology doesn't impact so much the glo new Glonass uh, frequency bands. Uh, we have um, uh, a, more, a slightly more complicated white noise uh, jamming system and a, a, a continuous wave, uh, more complicated system based on some of the NI technologies we've been using. So we have conduct, conducted exercises already with a, a vehicle to infrastructure type uh, simulation and found vulnerabilities within the, the uh, security implemented within uh, some of the, uh, uh, the positioning systems in the vehicle, uh, which is very interesting. And so again, you know, because of demonstration of vulnerabilities, we have to make sure the consortia, consortia are happy for us to publish that sort of information. Okay, so that's really all I have today. So thanks, I this is where the results would be if we had them ready. So <laughs> thanks very much for your time and thank you for um, tolerating me. <laughs>